How big an impact did Woodstock have on our popular culture? Consider the little bird in the Peanuts comic strip. Our Luke Burbank takes us between the lines. Charles Schultz, the creator of Peanuts, was many things. A father, a veteran, an artist. But one thing he was not, by any stretch, was a hippie. Do you think Charles Schultz would have enjoyed being at Woodstock? No. <laughs> Benjamin Clark curates the Charles M. Schultz Museum in Santa Rosa, California. He was famous for not liking to, not really enjoying travel <laughs> or crowds. Nonetheless, back in 1969, Schultz was looking for a name for one of his new characters, the yellow bird, who wasn't that great at flying. One day, Schultz picked up a copy of Life magazine. And he thinks, Woodstock, that's a good name for this bird. Yeah, apparently. Everyone had a close friend except Snoopy. So we introduced Woodstock, named after the famous music festival. Woodstock had a terrible time trying to learn how to fly and how to adapt to this puzzling world. The museum's current exhibit is called Peace, Love, and Woodstock. Ah, oh, this is it right here. And that's where Clark showed us the actual Peanuts comic strip where Woodstock officially got his name. Woodstock comes flittering in. Snoopy says, I finally found out what that stupid <laughs> bird's name is. And you'll never believe it. <laughs> Woodstock. You have basically Snoopy breaking the fourth wall. He's giving side eye to the reader. Yeah. He's like, get, get a load of this guy. He used to say he loved drawing Woodstock flying. You know, he'd go up and down and up and down and all around. So that's funny. And a comic strip is visual humor. Schultz's widow, <laughs> Jean Schultz, says like the famed concert in upstate New York, Woodstock, the Peanuts character, almost didn't come to be. I think once he said, oh, I don't know whether I really like Woodstock. Charles Schultz said that. Yeah, I think at the end he recognized that the relationship of Woodstock and Snoopy was really important, that Snoopy and Woodstock had this really close <laughs> friendship, and that Snoopy had someone he could love in that way. And so Woodstock found his place in Snoopy's world. Woodstock is loyal, and Woodstock is aware he is small, but he knows he matters to someone. <laughs> New Peanuts comic strips stopped when Schultz passed away in 2000. He was adamant he would be the only person who would ever draw the comic. But the Peanuts characters live on through movies, TV, and lots of merchandise. Schultz, a native Minnesotan, made Santa Rosa his home. This is Peanuts Central, and this is where he drew many of his daily comic strips. Nobody draws like Schultz does. Even any of us cartoonists who try to sort of ghost him, I can still tell it's not him. Paige Braddock, a cartoonist who was recruited directly by Schultz, now serves as chief creative officer for Peanuts. There's something in the personality of his stroke, you know, it's like really subtle things about where he picked the nib up and where he put it down and just the natural arc of his arm and hand when he was drawing. It's really hard to replicate. <laughs> something I found out firsthand. I'll do this for his beak, which is almost like a snout. Then I come back and do his head feathers. It's <laughs> There's a hidden genius in the simplicity of Schultz's drawings. And a simple message, says Gene Schultz, that might explain Peanuts' enduring popularity. The characters all have heartaches. They have hopes. They have critics. They have their own world with all the things that adults have, which I think is why adults like it. And children recognize right away that these are kids like them. A message that for its time was as countercultural as anything else happening in 1969. Coming up, a town to tie-dye for.